video is about a new surgical procedure for kneecap instability, which procedure I find exciting because it neatly addresses a disorder which I understand to be problematic but poorly appreciated. The surgical procedure is called arthroscopic deepening trochleoplasty, and in plain words that means a keyhole procedure that deepens the groove in which the kneecap sits. You can see this groove in the illustration here. The specific problem the operation addresses is kneecap instability due to trochlear dysplasia, a growth abnormality affecting the groove. I'm not going to go into great detail about trochlear dysplasia itself because it's been addressed in a separate video interview I had with the surgeon pioneer Dr. Lars Blund, and which is available on the Niguru website. But I feel a need to stress again in this video that the presence of trochlear dysplasia often gets missed and its contribution to the patient's symptoms goes unappreciated. This video will focus rather more on the surgical procedure itself, but I will still need to explain the basic issues. Trochlear dysplasia alters the shape of the upper groove, flattening and distorting it, making it easier for the kneecap to suddenly derail from this region either partway or fully. Recurrent derailing causes a great deal of distress to the patient and there might be associated stretching or tearing of other soft tissues at the same time which may aggravate the situation. In most cases of kneecap instability where trochlear dysplasia has been identified, the patient is initially referred for patella bracing and physiotherapy in the hope that improved gait and local muscle strength will prevent further derailing and allow the damaged tissues to heal. It is only if these conservative measures fail that a patient might be considered for surgery. So the procedure we are talking about here is relevant only to derailing specifically caused or aggravated by trochlear dysplasia and which has failed to respond to non-surgical measures. Now I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Lars Blund, who has pioneered this keyhole procedure. He's going to show us some clinical images and some footage of an actual operation. Thank you. In these scans of real patient, you can see that the image on the left has an ice group under the patella, but the one on the right is not normal. Instead of a concave groove, the trochlear is actually convex. Somehow too much bone has developed underneath the cartilage in the trochlear area. And this makes the patella tilt and becomes unstable. So the surgical procedure that you developed deepens the screw again? Yes, uh, let, let me show you a different scan to demonstrate this. This scan is from one patient before and after the procedure to deepen the groove. The image on the left is before the procedure and the one on the right is after the procedure. If you look at the arrow, you will see that there is a groove, but it's nowhere near the surface of the patella. It's far too medial. Uh, I mean, that is to the inner side. The image on the right is after the procedure, and you can see that I have deepened the groove and re-established this in, in the right place. That's very clear. I'm sure everyone will agree. So that seems like a good place to move on to the recording by Dr. Blund of an actual keyhole trochleoplasty procedure. This is the trochlear looking from above and you see a flat and dome shaped trochlear and in the upper part you see the kneecap. Here I release the synovia uh, on the over the trochlear bump. The trochlear bump is bone, too much bone, and in order to take away that bone I first have to release the synovia. Here I smoothen some of the cartilage on the kneecap side. Now I have released all the synovia and I can go in with my shaver burr. You will see it here. With this shaver burr I can go in between the cartilage and the bone and I'm going to release all the cartilage in the trochlear area from the bone. 
I just go slowly further and further until all the cartilage has been released in the upper part of the knee and I have this cartilage flake. Having done this I'm going to make a deeper groove you see it here and the groove is going to be placed in the middle of the knee and not on the inner side as it was before. Having made the groove deeper I'm going to reinsert the cartilage flake and I use these blue tapes and some blue sutures and they will press the cartilage flake into the new trochlea. I have to say that these sutures and tapes they are reabsorbed or dissolved in about six to eight weeks. Now you see the outer side of the trochlea. I'm going to demonstrate to you the trochlea looking from centrally. And here you see a nice deep groove that fits to the kneecap. Though the kneecap doesn't look that well, that's because the kneecap has dislocated many times. Thank you for looking and listening. Dr. Blund makes this procedure look easy, but there are few surgeons who undertake trochleoplasty at all, and this keyhole version of the procedure is still in the pioneering stage. There is a lot of work to do to increase awareness around the world of trochlear dysplasia itself, because the standard skyline x-ray views of the patella area generally fail to reveal it. Only a straight lateral x-ray view will properly allow an assessment of the anatomy of the upper part of the groove, and the most useful imaging techniques are probably MRI scans and ultrasound scans, which are not routinely ordered. Only once the incidence of trochlear dysplasia in the general population is fully appreciated can its contribution to kneecap instability and knee pain be known with certainty. Meanwhile, this procedure offers hope to people in which the condition has been identified and who are not responding to other measures. I'd like to stop the presentation now with special thanks to Dr. Lars Blund for his very clear explanation. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Learn more about your knees at nikuru.co.uk.